Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone betwixt or beside. Thank you for joining me. Uh, it's a pleasure every time you choose to do so, and it's uh, been a while. So double extra thank you. Uh, today, I want to run through the million dollar question asked about three times a second somewhere on the internet. Um, and that is Vim versus Neo Vim. What are the differences? What should you choose? And why does it matter? Um, so if you'd asked me this question a year or so ago, I would have said that it was kind of a wash uh, and it didn't really matter a whole lot. I still would have recommended Neo Vim, uh, but if you were to probe why, probably would have shrugged my shoulders and kind of mumbled a bit. Uh, it wasn't particularly compelling. Uh, but this is no longer the case, since version 0.5 or so, which was released to stable a couple of months ago now, uh, there are quite a, a, a number of substantial quantifiable differences that are pretty important. So let's have a quick look at those differences and you can decide for yourselves if you give a shit or not. Uh, firstly, I should say that a lot of the previous differences between Vim and NeoVim are now no longer there. If you do a search on Google, a lot of these things will come up. Um, there were things like uh, asynchronous actions using libuv that NeoVim had and that was kind of one of the main design goals in the beginning, I think. Uh, but Vim also has that now, and it's got uh, asynchronous actions. Uh, there was the embedded terminal stuff as well that NeoVim had. Vim 8 has that too, so those are no longer concerns. Okay, so if you don't know what the LSP is, it stands for Language Server Protocol. And it's basically a contract for a client to request information about a code base. So you can run a language server in the background and then ask it questions for things like uh, autocomplete. Like if I type the letter A here, what are all the currently valid symbols that I could complete that with, right? Or um, how could I better format this piece of code? Or a myriad of other things that the client, in this case NeoVim, could act upon. Uh, and this protocol is language agnostic, right? So providing you have the correct server running in the background for like TypeScript or Rust or C or whatever, NeoVim can interpret those LSP responses and give you a pretty consistent experience across different languages. Now, we had something like this before with Conqueror of Completion, or simply COC if you'd prefer, uh, but it could be horrifically slow, especially with like large TypeScript um, documents that could have, you know, literally thousands of, um, uh, of, of available symbols. Um, and it was kind of bloated, and because it was a plug-in for Vim rather than built-in functionality, writing third-party integrations for it was a bit of a pain in the ass uh, for no real benefit. It was a bit of a monolithic addition, right? Now, you could make the argument that integrating that into NeoVim just makes NeoVim more bloated, but that's not really the case because all NeoVim does is provide the absolute bare bones for interoperability with the LSP, right? Um, it relies on you as a user to decide on exactly how that information is displayed to you and how you're willing to interact with it. Um, and there are already a bunch of options, a, a bunch of plugins, things like uh, LSP Saga and uh, NVIM CMP uh, and all kinds of really smaller, more focused plugins that deal with the single problem of dealing with programming languages in a text editor while leaving NeoVim to do the heavy lifting and the processing of the raw data from the language server itself. This is a big plus for NeoVim if you do any kind of programming work. I mean, I reckon just like the delays on, on like um, Conqueror Completion, it would take like a good second or two seconds for the auto completion to come up sometimes. Um, with the LSP, I find it far faster and, uh, and more reliable, but it is a little bit more difficult to set up. Uh, but I've got a video coming about that soon. NeoVim now also has an embedded instance of Lua running within it to act as a scripting environment. Previously, and in Vim, you would have to use VimScript, or VimL as it's been called now, uh, which is a really a very naive configuration language, and it's horrifically slow. Not because it's bad or anything, but just because people were trying to make it do things that it was not intended to do, right? It was designed to set variables, really. That's as far as uh, VimScript was supposed to go. There are some truly Lovecraftian examples of VimScript being contorted out there on the internet. Um, and it was never really a viable option for the kinds of things that we want to do now. Um, so people started using Python for their plugins instead. Um, but Python is not particularly fast either. Um, the main reason people use Python was because of its very large set of libraries available, right? And um, a wide degree of uh, support across platforms. Um, and because it's just a nice language, right? 
Uh, but again, it's slow, and the intermediate interface between Python and Vim is a real bottleneck. Um, Lua, however, is perfect for embedding into host applications. That's kind of what it was designed for. And it is monstrously fast compared to pretty much any other interpreted language, maybe except JavaScript. Um, Lua JIT is at least 10 times faster than Python, purely in its execution time, let alone the advantages of being embedded. Um, right? it, it's so much faster. But I think more importantly than speed, like the speed's great, but I think that having this embedded environment, it started to unify the plugin community a little bit, right? And we already have some common uh, Lua libraries that are being used across the space, uh, things like plenary and those kind of things, and they all sit in the same embedded environment. Like there's a lot of reusability and it's kind of fantastic. If I had to pick one reason to choose NeoVim, it would be this because pretty much all the interesting stuff being done in the plugin space right now is being done in Lua. And that's only going to accelerate. That's not that's not going to change. Um, I don't want to be needlessly divisive, but if anything kills Vim, it will be this, in my opinion. TreeSitter is still in the fairly early stages, but essentially what it is is a service embedded into NeoVim that can pass a programming language into a concrete syntax tree. Uh, efficiently and provide that information to the editor. What that means is we can start to do clever things with the code, like syntax highlighting, for instance, instance um, that is actually based on the type of object that is being highlighted, right? Currently, syntax highlighting is based on regexes, essentially just text analysis. And regex-based highlighting alone can't tell what a word is, like if it's a class or a function. Um, so you get fairly limited bland highlighting. Uh, TreeSitter can also give more sensible information about things like indentations in code um, because it knows more about the file, right? It knows what these things actually are semantically, not just syntactically. TreeSitter integration with NeoVim is still kind of in the early stages and I don't really use it for much except the highlighting. Um, it's really good on uh, TypeScript highlighting, for instance. Everything else is a little bit too alpha for me. Um, but I reckon we're going to see some amazing uses for TreeSitter in the future. Just because uh, of the speed. Because TreeSitter, um, whereas the LSP gives you very concrete, accurate information slowly, TreeSitter will give you approximations, but it does so very, very fast, right? Um, so I think that once developers start to use that, we'll be able to get all kinds of really fast static analysis going on like while you're typing. It's going to be fantastic. This is the final thing I'll cover, and it's not really of interest to me, but I know it is for some people, um, and that is the fact that NeoVim can now be embedded into other software. Um, NeoVim can essentially become a kind of text editing engine and farm out the rendering to another process. So this means that you can get like third-party GUIs for NeoVim that have pretty rendering capabilities. I use my NeoVim in a terminal, so it's not a big deal for me, but there are some things like um, that these GUIs can do that are impossible in a terminal, like uh, a minimap, for instance, font ligatures, scroll bars, high DPI support, uh, indent guides, all those kinds of things. Um, so if you if you really like what VS Code can do, some of those extra things, then uh, what a lot of people have started to do is embed NeoVim into v VS Code. I don't think that's the right solution. I think really you should be embedding, embedding NeoVim into an, uh, a NeoVim GUI, a NeoVim GUI. Um, I'll stick some links to some in the descriptions if you want to check them out. One interesting thing about this embedding capability though is that you can even do stuff like embed NeoVim in Firefox, for instance, for like text input fields, which is not something I would ever use, but it blows my mind that that's even possible. So which should you choose? Um, for me, you have to go with NeoVim. It's not that Vim 8 is particularly bad or anything. Um, it's just that there's no compelling reason to choose it over NeoVim. Um, one thing I didn't mention was the developer community and the devs on NeoVim are simply fantastic. People like TJ DeVries uh, give so much back in the way of streams and commentary and plugins uh, that people can use. And that's in addition to actually, you know, building the damn thing. Um, I don't know if other people feel the same way, but it feels like in the last 12 months there's been a massive boost for Vim and just working in this kind of what I consider to be a more thoughtful way, right? Like actually thinking deeply about workflow and how we can improve it. 
Um, and I've got to say, I'm loving it. It's great. And I think that the Neo Vim developers have had a huge role to play in that. Um, so pop a loving comment on this video saying how much you love the Neo Vim developers. Don't do it on their videos, do it on my video for reasons. Um, okay, I think this video is long enough now. Um, I have a couple of videos planned uh, for the future, including all my changes to my Vim workflow in 2021 with a whole new Lua configuration. It's going to be fantastic. So please subscribe and stick around for that. And I'll see you next time.